This will be interesting for you guys. I think you'll like this one. Okay. Now, if we just want the engine cover to come up without messing with the top. <laughs> yes, it's Tuesday and my car's in the shop again. And no, <laughs> no, Chuck, I'm not having anything done in my car. Not just yet anyways. <laughs> but do you see how clean it looks? Yeah. Yeah, thanks to my son, Ryan. I see you got all that crap off the front. I mean, it was bad. Even there was just a film of dirt on and there. Mirrors. And then Ryan, Ryan cleans it and he goes, uh, Dad, how did you let your car get so dirty? It's just, you've got to take the time. I didn't have the time. You've got to take the time to hand wash it well, yeah, to I'm, do it right. Yeah. It's called uh, driving them. Right, that's what I do. Yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. She's not a garage queen unless you're bringing it down here to have it worked on. Yeah, I know. Oh. And it is Tuesday. <laughs> I do have some things coming for you, just not today. Uh, so stand uh, by. Yeah. So we're going to read a couple of emails from you guys for our Tech Tuesday. And then the focus, the feature is going to be Chuck's going to show you guys how to put your hardtop convertible in your C8 Corvette in service mode and why you may want to do that. But before we get started, I got a couple of things I want to cover, but let me just get your opinion real quick. You've always been very candid. <laughs> don't, don't stop now. <laughs> the announcement yesterday from Mark Royce, General Motors, the electrified Corvette, so it's going to have a gas derivative. It'll be a hybrid before the all-electric Corvette. You as a technician, what's your take on all this? been real and it's been fun but they've been real fun. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta tell I'm not excited about the all-electric car this is a hard is, one for me to embrace. Is the noise going is the exhaust sound gonna play through the oh, radio? Well, yeah you're gonna have to have something like that for Pete's sake. I mean, it's not a Corvette if it doesn't have that. It's American muscle. But I think you I think you lose the connection. I don't think our infrastructure I don't want to make this a political thing but I don't think we're set up for charging our cars. No. And you're gonna be a line to charge your cars and it's gonna, you're gonna lose the, the effect of, hey, throw your stuff in the car and let's go and go off the beaten path and just discover this great country. Now you're gonna be chasing down charging stations. Yeah, you can do that. But now when my car runs out of gas, I find an air section, I pull off, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> 10 right. minutes, I'm back on the road. Right. Now I pull off searching for a charging station and I'm there two hours waiting for it to charge. No, exactly. That's if you get a spot. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah, or so, you don't get shot. I don't want to go into all that right all. now. There's a lot, it, I think we're making some perfect sense, and maybe by the time that the all-electric Corvette comes out uh, that we're not having this conversation. But right now, hmm, my biggest concern I'm is- I'm like it's a V8 power, baby. Well, yeah, and my biggest concern is what are we going to do with the batteries when they're no longer any good? Oh, dude, please, don't even start. Just yeah. stop right there. And that's generated a lot of calls for people going, hey, I want to be on the list for the E-Ray or wherever the heck is going to be called. It's also generated more conversation and more realization that we've known for a long time, and maybe we've talked about it or not, but let's talk about it now. The Z06 is going to be the last raw V8 power and what an engine to do a swan song. I mean, it's the most powerful, naturally aspirated V8 car in the world. And that is gonna be the very last one for Corvette. So the excitement and the demand for Z06 is crazy. So it's a, I don't even wanna say that. Let me just back up for a second. Okay, so. <laughs> we need to change gears here. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. <laughs> Let's face it, right now, today's video, Tech Tuesday, we don't have production announcement for Z06, we don't have distribution, allocations, and we don't have a price. So it's great talking about all this future product. I'm just saying. That's all I'm saying <laughs> right now. Switch gears again. Yeah. I'm drunk here in a minute. <laughs> okay. I forget which way I was going. I'm starting to get dizzy. All right. I got a couple of things to open with for Tech Tuesday. Then Chuck's got a couple of emails. And then the feature. You guys are really going to want to know this when you go to car shows. Service mode for your hardtop convertible. And then I'm going to smack a couple of you hardtop convertible guys out there. I'm just, I'm just going to be me and I'm going to be real. You're not going to like this, but... Okay, so anyways, if you would, please. Sure. Appreciate that. Just um, a couple of notes real quick. Thank you for watching a lot of the videos. As we've been a couple of weeks in Tech Tuesday, Chuck's been working on a car that's no longer there because it's done. 
the transmission issue on the C8 Corvette. Yesterday on my Shorts channel, we had the delivery, the send-off pat for Steve. Very understanding guy, and he's so happy because now the car is in his garage and not ours. Uh, if you want to see that video, it's just a great-looking car, ceramic matrix gray with the red interior. Video link is down below in the description. A couple other videos we did here on the main channel when I went to Chicago. <sighs> One thing I'm to tell you right now: there's no politics on this channel. Period. Ever. You could, you guys can say whatever you want, but we don't, we don't do that. All right. You guys missed the message of what we were talking about in Chicago, and then somebody made some smart-ass comment. Ah, oh, what's wrong with that Conti and call me all kinds of names because I'm talking like this. I am Italian. Oh, <laughs> that's it. What'd you say? I said, if I tied your hands, you wouldn't be able to talk. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've heard it before. Uh, yeah. Good. And then in case you missed the video Sunday, if you've got time, when you, and you guys usually take a lot of time watching our uploads, I gave you yet another perspective, something different, but what I go through, and I do it the same way, every single time preparing a car for delivery and or shipping, uh, that was fun for me. Just, it was a relaxed conversation, a lot of positive comments on that one. Thank you so much, guys. I really do appreciate that. All right, Chucky, you're done holding the camera. You did that pretty good, man. You didn't even, you didn't even wiggle or anything. I'm always moving around. Because I'm Italian. Yeah. All right. And uh, I'm just going to read one real quick uh, that I got as a comment on the YouTube channel. And then you got a couple of emails. Sure. We'll address. And then we're going to do the service mode for the hardtop convertible. Somebody had made a comment on uh, one of the recent videos and said, why? and this comes up a lot, why don't you save the white in transit car cover for the customers? We kind of did back at the beginning of C7. That was like that was like a thing. And if you talk to any of those guys now, it's either still in the garage in a box or they've thrown it away. The heck are you going to do with it? That thing, especially on C8, it is so tough to get off the car. Yeah. Guys, I don't think you'll ever get it back on the car. So in plus two, it serves a purpose in transit cover. Correct. That's what it's for. Getting it back on is near impossible. Plus two, uh, you'll see, and I've talked about this before too, when we get to the point, one day it will get here, when I'm ordering inventory, you can forget me ever ordering a black car for this dealership being on the lot because they, they scuff and they scratch the car. I had, and it's mostly gone now, you get some stuff where it's so tight rated here over on the gas cap. I had some scratch on the back of, back of my trunk lid and there's some stuff up in here. And no matter how tight they make them, the wind gets under them. Yes, absolutely. And so, it beats the car. That's why we don't save them. Chuck throws them out. It's just, I think I had a guy ask just recently. He was going to ship his car. Hey, can you put that cover back on? <laughs> no. <laughs> you don't want me to. You know, so we're always looking out for you. If you watch my video on Sunday, you know that we're always looking out for you just in the preparation. So when the car comes off the truck, it is, uh, you know, the phrase is turnkey ready, but it's push button ready uh, in today's day and age. All right, a couple of emails for you real quick. Uh, Chuck, what do you got, buddy? All right, let's see here. This one comes from Steve. He says, when I set my auto on my 22C8, headlights will come on even on a sunny day. I'm assuming his automatic headlight oh, control. Oh, yeah, okay. It is inconsistent and annoying. Any suggestions? Ah, the only thing I can figure is something's causing a shadow or something over that because it is light sensitive and it don't take a whole lot to turn the headlights on. Yeah, you go on. underneath a tunnel, they're going to come on. Sure. And it's funny you mentioned that because we had a guy years ago and he had the same thing. So your sensor's right over here yeah. and he had a radar detector mounted here. And I think this guy mentioned early in the morning or at least the other client had. Well, no, it just says it's inconsistent. It's inconsistent. Well, the other client had something that was early in the morning. So the sun's a little bit more down like this and it was causing a shadow as Chuck was just talking about from the unit of the radar detector and it went right over that. So as he turned the corner, all of a sudden the lights would come back on and then they would dim back down inside. And yes, that is frustrating. So yeah. unless you had actually physical papers up on your dash, which it's hard to keep anything to stay up you there. You go under a bridge or go down a street sure. line with trees. And right. once it sees a low light condition, right. boom, it turns the lights on. Not gonna change, okay. Hopefully that helps you. What else you got, Chuck? Okay, here's another one. Comes from another Steve. It says, uh, has, any, has anyone ever gotten into their C8 with the key fob in your pocket and not been able to start the engine or get out of the car? I had that situation. I can't remember the message on the dash, 
but it said something about key fob needing to be placed in its holder. Not sure what that means, but still was a little anxious as I'm kind of warm in the car and I finally got the engine to start. Sounds to me like the key fob battery might be getting weak. That's exactly what it sounds yeah, like. I'm, I'm not sure what year it is, or but usually when the key fob battery, these vets forever take juice. A yeah. lot of juice. <laughs> and I can take a key fob battery out of a, a transmitter and a Corvette that it won't no longer work in because it's only had 2.8 volts and put it in anything else and it'll work for another year. Yeah. But it won't work in a vet. They are electronic dependent. Yeah, and it's a little bit different too. If you remember in C6 and C7, if you had a low key fob battery, you either put it in the slot in the glove box or you put it in the slot in the steering column. Now on C8, so you know, you take your key fob battery now and you put it in the cup holder. Not this one, you put it in the second one. You lie it in there. Buttons up. Yep, yeah, I don't think it really matters. I have to read the owner's manual, to be honest with you, but just put it in there. Underneath is where that electronic pulse is going to read, and with a dead fob battery will allow you to push the button and start your car at least one time to get to the dealership and get a new fob battery. So as we evolve into cars that have more juice, and even more is coming, uh, yeah. this, is, this is stuff that you guys need to know. All right, Chuck, I think you got one more before today's feature, yeah. I've got one more, that comes from Bob. Okay. It says, hey Rick, first of all, thank you so much for your passion for Corvettes and including all of us through your channel. Yes, thank you both, thank you very much. Uh, I'm a proud owner of a 21 Torch Red Z51. Purchased in April of last year, I've been in love with it since the day I laid my eyes on it, not to mention the smile on my face every time I fire it up, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Last summer, after discovering the launch control and some spirited driving, smoke seemed to emerge from the vent over the engine compartment after putting the car in the garage. A small amount of fluid drips on the floor near the inside of the rear tire. This would happen after launching the car and a bit of hard driving. After normal driving, none of this takes place. I rarely drive like that and have not done so since last summer. I took the car to the dealership last summer. They could not find out what the cause was. The car just turned 3,000 miles and the first service and oil change was just completed. Have you ever heard of this occurring and what do you suspect is going on? And so when he does normal driving, it's, yeah, it's not fine. happening. Only when he's jamming on it. Yeah. Okay, so you and I talked about this off camera and what's your, uh, your take? Well, I mean, the exhaust and everything wraps right over, sits back there. So I don't know if he's getting still some burn off with only 3,000 miles on it. He might still be getting some burn off from the catalytic converters. Yeah. Causing that steam or, I mean, dri I, drips on the ground. It's hard to say because it's got the big catch panel underneath. Well, here's the other thing too. If he's doing launch control and the car's not warmed up, that's right. harder on the car. Now you were with me when we did the launch control video. Yeah. You guys got to see that. I let a bunch of random people that have <laughs> never driven a Corvette, they launch controlled my car, that link down below in the description. But when we did that, uh -huh. the fans were running. Sure, the whole but, time. But the car was already warmed up. I drove right. it specifically for about 20 minutes before we did that because I wanted the car to be warm. Yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah, I, I'm not sure what's going on. I know yeah. in the C7s that water used to get down in the front vent and steam would come out. Sure. But as soon as you started, you see water just kind of spew. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know if maybe some moisture is getting in there or got in there the one time or if it does it every time you do launch control. I'm right. not sure. All right. I haven't seen anything. All right. All right. And we're going to do our feature now for you guys on Tech Tuesday. If you want to grab the keys, I left sure. them in the cup holder over there. Some of you guys, and I don't know if you've seen this yet or not, Chuck, some guys are into opening up the tonneau cover at the car shows, and they've even went to the point where they've taken that panel off that you do for service, and they've made it clear so you could see the engine cover. I say, if you want to see the engine cover, and now you have your car looking like this at a car show, buy a coupe. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, seriously, I mean, what the hell's the point? And then when you do put it up at the car shows, you've got this multi-piece part of the top kind of halfway here and this up here yeah, so you can see it. demonstrate. Exactly. All so right. So this is service mode. Well, no, we're not going to do service mode first. Everybody okay. knows if you hit the unlock button twice and hold it, it will come up. But you have to be timely to try to stop it before this happens. Right. Okay. So, instead of doing that, let's put it back down now. Yeah, and you can't do that with key fobbies. you got to start yeah. the car. This will be interesting for you guys. I think you'll like this one. Okay. Now, 
if we just want the engine cover to come up without messing with the top, we're going to hit the lock button two times and hold the same button. Okay. Now it don't matter how long you hold it, just the engine cover is going to come up and it's going to stop and lock in place. The top never moves. You see I'm still holding the button, but the top never moves. This way you can open just the engine cover. Oh, that's cool. I, I guess if you do have those situations where this is cleared, I know some, some people actually did a printed image and put it over top of that to, to look like the engine. Uh, okay, but I guess if you're going to do that at a car show, let's walk over here because of the lighting. If you're going to do it at a car show, the way Chuck's doing it now, the in-service mode for the convertible, that looks cool because this is the part that you're featuring and you don't have all this getting discombobulated and unlatched. Right. And you don't have these starting to flip up. Do what now? Get it, get it painted. Yeah. Wait a minute, we've, we've, we've got the two cents now from, from Nate. They're all about blue, but let's take it off. And what, and paint this? Paint no, nah. because in my car, the only people who are going to see it is you. <laughs> I don't ever open this. I pointed at you, but I think he meant Yeah. Yeah. I don't ever open this. I don't open this, but I, I think it's a good conversation today for the folks that go to car shows. That's a great idea. I'm glad you mentioned it last week. I said we had to cover this. I think the car aesthetically looks better now. Now you know, oh, this is not a coupe. This is a hardtop convertible, and you're focused and featuring the convertible area, and if, in fact, you have one of the clear areas here, or you just take this off. I think some people just take this off, but it's a real pain in the ass to take this off. And then you see your engine cover in here if you do and elect to have something customized for your car. So how about that? Yeah, you just hit the unlock button now. You can open the doors. You can open the front. Everything still works the same once you hit the unlock button. Obviously, you can't open the truck. Yeah, you never could anyways. Yeah, because yeah, because that's going to hit your vent back in here. So but that's that's the way to put your engine cover up without disturbing the roof, the convertible roof. Yeah, I don't know about you guys, but I enjoyed today's Tech Tuesday. Thank you so much for joining us. And I know right now many of you watching that have taken the time to watch are traveling to the National Corvette Museum. I'll see you Thursday afternoon, all day on Friday. Be careful driving. Watch out for freaking potholes that are all over these roads nowadays. And be careful going home as well.